This is a video on the making of the new OMA K3 turntable shot at OK Foundry in Richmond, Virginia, where the whole process takes place. And I think it's really important to understand or to, to see how this is done because it explains so much about why the turntable looks the way it does, how it performs, how it sounds, and it's just an, an amazingly interesting process. Sand casting goes back thousands of years. Really, it's at the very beginning of human technology. And uh, while the, the forms have changed, these are patterns, wooden patterns, that the sand is going to be placed into uh, to create the, the molds into which the cast iron is poured. Um, the, the process of pouring molten metal into a hole in sand, that goes back to the very beginning of human civilization, culture, and technology. This production line uh, starts with these patterns which have been made out of wood and, and painted in a, in, a, in a silver paint to allow the release of the sand easily. The black sand is, is packed into these, these molds which are kind of like cake forms and um, to create essentially um, a void and there's going to be two sides to each of these these patterns and, and, and molds which when the sand is released will have a void and that void is the space in which the molten metal which is poured in through a hole which you'll see in the top, here's the, the sprue, the, the pipe that will create the hole where the metal will go. And the metal, the, the, the molten metal will, will rush into this, into this void and solidify, and that will be what we're going to be working with to create the, the turntable. Um, you'll also see a pattern for the SP10 plinth and the foundry also makes the OMA equipment racks and uh, the ironic loudspeaker. These patterns were, uh, and molds were, were created out of very strong plywood. There's another way in which this can be done, which is by 3D printing the molds, which is not done at OK Foundry, it's done on an extremely expensive multi-million dollar machine. There's only a few of them in the United States. But that's not how we make the K3. It is, however, actually, how we started the process of K3 because we didn't think it was possible, or would be possible, to create these forms and patterns to um, create the, the shape of the, the K3 turntable body, and most importantly, the voids inside of the body. But we found that the 3D printed sand molds were actually not as good because of the nature of the way the sand is compacted, constructed, as making patterns. So we, we went to a, a great deal of expense to create these forms that you're seeing, which are being packed with black sand. Um, it's being flipped over so you can get to the other side to create the, um, the molds to do K3. It was, it was Jamie, actually, who came to me, I think really more than 10 years ago now, um, as, as you know, someone who was a fan of, of OMA and said, uh, you know, I've got this foundry in Richmond. We do interesting work. Um, we do some artwork, we do industrial work, and, and we have some processes that you might find interesting. We'd love to work with you. And it was that collaborative spirit that actually sort of paved the way to do first um, the ironic speaker, uh, which is a very interesting story into itself. By the way, that's the SP10 uh, mold being made at the same time as we're making a K3 for the techniques turntable. Jamie said, you know, we could probably do some really cool things together. And uh, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm game. 
And you know, what developed was this relationship which resulted in all sorts of products that we would never have been able to make you know, ourselves. We were too small a company to uh, go and seek out foundries. And there's very few foundries, by the way, like Jamie's OK Foundry in Richmond, Virginia, left in America today. There's very, very few small family-owned foundries. These parts that are being made here, which you might go like, what? this doesn't look like anything belonging to a turntable. These are actually core parts. So when you're trying to make a space within a part, in other words, a hollow within a solid part, which is essential to the way we design K3, you need what's called a core, or a core part. And this part is, is preventing the metal when it's poured into the form for the body of K3 from, from just making a solid block. And so what you're seeing here is the solid uh, thing that is going to be a hollow inside of the final um, casting of K3. And that's so important because the way Richard Krebs designed K3 was to have all sorts of hollow spaces within this big blocky looking, you know, piece of cast iron, which would, those hollow spaces would themselves be filled with a mixture of a type of oil and particles that would dampen any vibrations. So with K3, what we were trying to do was to create this massive cast iron body, which would have these very, very carefully designed and engineered uh, voids inside, cavities that, that um, connect to each other to mitigate and ameliorate vibrations, resonances generated by the turntable itself, even though it has an extremely quiet motor, and importantly, airborne vibrations and vibrations coming from the environment that could come up, for example, vis-a-vis -vis the stand, um, to make the whole thing so quiet that any, any noise in the system would be ameliorated. And that's just like the same reason that you, if you have a multi-million dollar scanning electron microscope, you, you make sure that it's as isolated from vibrations as possible. We were trying to do the same thing with the K3 turntable, and thus we had to create voids which would have these special materials inside to quiet the whole thing down. And what you're seeing are these parts which are very, very carefully assembled that will go inside of the mold that will pr produce the, the empty spaces. You can see all the intricate handwork. Uh, this is done by Jesse, he's a sculptor in residence at the foundry. And you know, the, the uh, care that's placed into to this work has a direct result on the finished product because any imperfections or voids are gonna show up um, in the casting. Now, this is inside of the K3 casting, but on the outside of the K3 casting, we wanted to get as perfect a casting as possible while still allowing the process that, from which the turntable was made, meaning sand casting, to be readily apparent. So in other words, we wanted it to look like a cast object. We wanted it to have that roughness that a cast object would have and not that perfect machined look that everything else has. That, that bit of imperfection is what you see in, for example, you know, I hate to use the word about art, but you know, in, in any work of art, because no work of art is perfect. And uh, industrial objects, which are not art, they're designed objects, they have to have a function also had this design ethos until relatively recently with Jonathan Ive and Apple where everything looks like it was beamed down from a, a UFO from a spaceship and no human beings ever touched it. And what I wanted to see from the aesthetic standpoint, which was so incredibly difficult to do and expensive, as you see from this process of making these sand molds, was to create an extremely beautifully done cast iron object which would reveal the nature 
of the process behind it, um, but, but still be, be very beautiful and, 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 and true looking, authentic looking. So these are the two sides or the two parts of the mold that are being assembled now and they're going to get glued together and you'll have to imagine that the empty space within these two parts, that's where the cast iron, that the, the molten iron is going to go. And that is going to be, in the end, what our turntable looks like. And so every aspect of this process, uh, how, how diligently and carefully done it is, will have a direct result on the final casting. And even with all this great attention and care to the process, still the failure rate, because we need something that looks really great, is very, very high, which also accounts for the great expense of the turntable. The iron is being melted here in this huge pot, and here's, here's the pouring gantry where this big ladle of iron, they're, they're pouring it out of the induction furnace, which brings the iron up to a very specific you know, range of temperature. It can't be too cool, it can't be too hot. And you know it's well over a thousand degrees centigrade, I believe. And this is a hypoeutectic gray iron. So this is iron that has a very high graphite content, which is important to the vibration isolation characteristics of the metal and what we needed for this turntable. So the iron is being poured into this big ladle, like a soup ladle, and that's gonna be swung around and carefully poured into each one of these molds. And the way this is done is very, very old school, but very important because if the, if the pour is done too hard and too fast, it will blow the mold apart. And that's exactly what happened when I first tried to, to shoot the ironic turntable. It was the first thing we made at, at the ironic speaker, the first thing we made 10 years ago at, at, at OK Foundry. And it's not easy to get these pours correct so that the iron gets to all parts of the mold when it's still hot enough to not have any fissures or bubbles or incomplete castings. It's, it's really, there's an art here to how something as simple as, as pouring a liquid metal into this big block of, of sand, how this is done. And when it's done properly, we get a casting that we can use. Um, and uh, this, um, this, this casting process, as I said, this goes back you know, many, many thousands of years, and yet it's still the best way, really the only way, for us to make something like the K3 turntable, uh, which was a seven-year process to go from the concept to this. Now, they, they did this for the camera because the mold would not be unceremoniously dumped and, and cracked open, but that is K3 right there. That is the casting, which will then go through many additional processes, but that casting, is um, is you know would be allowed to cool more naturally, but but here we see what it looks like red hot.